Ho! Welcome back, gamers and geeks, to another episode of Gamer Culture. My name is Kuma, and today we're doing things a little differently today. Keep it, uh, we're keeping it a smaller format. We only got one guest with us today. Matt, how are you, man? Yo, I'm tired, man. No, look, I need sleep. I need $3 million. And like, I need, I need money for video games. This is rough. I'm oh, sorry. Struggle. Fucking bingo, Struggle. man. I just got, I just scratched all of those. So you got $3 million? Yo, hook it up. No, no, I need oh. it. I need it. <laughs> Fucking someone wants to give me $3 million. Just find that on the side of the road. Yo, hook it up. <laughs> hook it up, everybody. That's like the number one question I get. I'll, I'll ask people, how you doing today at work? And they're like, well, I need a million dollars. I've just started telling them, uh, when you find it, finder's fee. Yo, yo, like hook it up. Yo. <laughs> but it's all good though. I'm happy to be here, and it's all fun. It's been a while since I've done a gamer culture. It's been a minute, right? It has. I feel like it. It's since been E3, a while. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because even not had you on in a while. Because even on E3, you weren't here. You were doing something mm -hmm. slash. I think I was money. working. I don't even know. Look, yeah. This is, this is, <laughs> I get that, but I'm excited to be here though. So I'm, I appreciate you letting me be one of the guests. You know. Absolutely, dude. I was excited to have you back. It's been a hot minute, like you said. And today we're talking about uh, DLC and games. Uh, the good, the bad, the terrible. Uh, spoiler alert, mo most of it's terrible. Yep. Yep. I I remember. Oh, my God. God I, I wasn't doing like gamer culture. Or I wasn't into like games journalism or entertainment or whatever it is we do here um, at the time. But I, I remember dlc really starting to pick up uh the pace probably about ooh, um early 2010s maybe just before would, yeah just before around that time because that's when uh pay to buy low-key started getting popular especially within mm -hmm. mobile games as well as in video games as well too to where you get the extra content instead of them making another video game they're just doing extra stuff you know dlc just for the game because yeah. that's when i think when like i'm not saying disc were starting to get phased out but more of like downloading games to a console digital was, actually, was on their eyes yeah like was on the hell of rise at that point which was and, it, and it's always good it's good you know save the environment no disc blah 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 but at the same time uh dlc started coming back up more and more and that's when it started getting a little bit chaotic you know yeah and and like you said like we, we definitely saw it a lot with, with mobile gaming being on the rise because i think that's really where a lot of the shit show started which is why people probably weren't as scared of it at first because it was all mo mobile games at the time. No one gave a shit about mobile. Um, so we were like, okay, mobile games charge a little extra for stuff on the side, whatever. That's just how mobile games are. You know, that's the price of mobile gaming. And then, like you said, you know, when uh, physical started to decline in favor of digital, we started to see that more that DLC uh, dropping the extra content Um games as a service started to become more his thing. It wasn't called that yet, but the concepts were coming into place. And I, I think there's been some, some good DLC out there and there's definitely been bad. And I think the worst way to do DLC, which I'll start with, I would say is probably epitomized in how EA, uh, so surprise, surprise, it's EA, <laughs> um, how EA handled battlefront Two right before it's launch. It, it, it was rough. And to be honest, EA sports, it's in the game. But they also in my wallet as well, too, because, man, oh, fuck. They, yeah. oh. <laughs> they asked for so much money. Risk and I feel, like, I feel like EA is the one who started all of this. I know they yeah. weren't, but they started the whole DLC, pay for DLC, pay to win, and all that stuff. Which Look, EA didn't start the fire, but they fanned the flames. <laughs> they fanned the flames? They 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 bought the fucking the wood in the fire as well? <laughs> they bought extra shit for no fucking reason. Yeah, they definitely didn't start it, but they They're kept that They're that guy that went to a beach burning. bonfire and showed up with pallets. Yep, showed up with fucking pallets with a little bit of gasoline <laughs> on the side, because, man, EA <laughs> fucking lit that shit up with their money. Oh, my goodness. And it was so... And if, if, if anyone's not familiar, so EA goes, listened, quote unquote, listened to uh, feedback from Battlefront 1 because Battlefront 1 was plagued with DLC. I think someone came out and said, if you wanted all the content for uh, Battlefront, you had to pay either like hundreds of dollars or spend th or spend thousands of hours playing to get everything. Um, and then with Battlefront 2, it was going to be very similar and the backlash that they were facing off of Battlefront 1 and with pressure from Disney, um, since Disney owned the rights to those games, 
I think it was literally hours before the game actually launched um, was when they pulled the microtransactions from the market and then fixed, uh, after the game launched, they fixed the progression si system. Because what they were doing was if you wanted heroes, like some of the better heroes in the game, and he heroes with objectively better powers, um, you had to either play a shit ton or you could buy them. And it was the same thing with the ships for the aerial combat and a lot of the weapons. If you wanted the better weapons, you either had to pay for them, which a lot of times you couldn't even pay for them directly. There were loot boxes, which was its own shit show. Oh my God. Uh, don't even get started with that. Oh God. I know, right? Oh, almost legal, almost illegal in Hawaii. And what was it? Denmark? Yeah. Yo, that's another episode we'll talk about with loot boxes and shit. I, I promise. Oh, it was, it's bad, but yeah, they, did they paywalled all this shit? All, all this shit was uh, objectively better than the stuff you started with. And right before the game launched, they're like, okay, no more microtransactions. All that stuff's in the game. It's all progression locked. Um, the only DLC is cosmetics. And then eventually they're like, all heroes and all ships are unlocked from the start of the game. Um, every, everything that is now DLC is purely co cosmetic, which is a good lesson. Um, but holy shit, if you are going to lock better stuff that is objectively better and will give you a measurable advantage behind a paywall when you've already paid for the game. To me, that is the purest expression of bad DLC. It is. It is. It's real bad in DLC. Cause also it's also scummy as well too, where people can just mm -hmm. be like, all right, Hey, I have the money. I want the better shit. Let me pay for it, which is okay. I get why they did that. But at the same mm -hmm. time, it is fucked up for people who don't have the time or who don't have the money to just drop DLC. No one also has the time yeah. to sit in the game for uh, hundreds of hours, <laughs> except Tyler when it comes to like Kingdom Hearts and shit. <laughs> but like, like no one ain't got time for that shit at all. So I do understand why they did that for DLC. But at the point, the execution and the way it was presented was so fucking bad. And unfortunately, because of that, other people started copying that. They, mm -hmm. they copied it 100% as well, too, because they did it. Because the same, what you mentioned about cosmetics, fucking I, Street Fighter. I love I love fighting games. I've been on here. Y'all know I love fighting games. But Street yep. Fighter basically yep. did the same fucking thing as well, too. From Street Fighter 4, from Street Fighter, Ultra, I'm sorry, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 5, Arcade Edition, Street Fighter 5. And I get, like, season passes. That's a little different. Like, buying mm -hmm. new characters because they're releasing new characters and all that stuff. But most of the stuff. It's fucking cosmetics. Why do I need to pay another $30, which is basically the same fucking game, just yeah. for cosmetics? Like, I, there's no point for me to pay that much. Yes, I only want, like, one character, but I shouldn't have to pump out five or ten bucks to do that as well, too. There's no fucking point. Yeah. And they yeah. are taking advantage of that, and I don't like it. And the, pa the, the only reason why they're doing it is because they know the fan base is like, well, fuck it. We're just going to do it anyway. So <laughs> we'll just bite the book, you know? So like it, yeah. it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. And it's it, exactly, especially in a fighting game where that game is based around the character pool. And it, it, like you said, if you're going to do season pass, then where you're like, Hey, we're going to, you know, you pay a lump sum of money now. Yeah. And then over the season, we're going to release these char characters. That's, I mean, I that's, still think if you're going to release a character, release a character, but that's a little more acceptable to me. But, it but is. like, with, like you said, with the cosmetics, five or $10 just to make my character look different. Fucker, you're getting two bucks at most. And it's not even, it's not even like, like anything interesting. Like, look, if I look, are people who watching this, look, if it was a titty on screen or like some cheeks, all right, that's different. I'll pay for that. <laughs> but if I'm going to see you just wear an old school outfit, or just a tether out. No, that is not worth my money. The reason why yeah. it's like one frustration is a Street Fighter, the new Street Fighter Five uh, Championship Edition just came out. They were mm -hmm. during the whole summer. They just released Oro from Third Strike, that was now in Five, as well as Akira from um, the Rival School series, which are new characters, same as Rose and all that stuff. Which is dope. I get the characters, but then to pay thirty dollars, I get the characters, but I still get all the costumes and everything. Mm -hmm. Why the hell am I paying? $30, which that's what the game cost originally. Yeah. Why am I paying yeah. another $30 just for some costumes? Maybe a stage, maybe an extra song, but that's the fuck it. Like, I'm not even yeah. getting the characters until they get released. And even then, that's a 50 50 gamble, you know? So, yeah. like, you've already had my money. Just, stuff like that's wild. It's it's wild to me. I'm, I, I realize, you know, artists have to be paid, sound engineers have to be paid. I, of I, course. I, I get it. 
but with the amount of people that play this game, $30 is just that, that just excess. If yeah, everyone yes. playing that game pays two bucks for a costume or for a bunch of, for several co- costumes for a costume set, you know, mm-hmm. I think final, not, not final fantasy, uh, the tales series you pay, you might pay 10, 15 bucks for a costume set, but that's cause you're getting costumes for every single character. Yeah. And that's, um, really that's a little better, a little better, but still not that much. But as much as I really want to shit on DLC console, there are some good, right? There's there some are good, there's some good DLC out there. You know, do you have I mean, any, like we said, like cosmetics for DLC at a mm-hmm. reasonable price is good. The, I think a good example of DLC was how Pokemon handled um, the uh, the two expansions to Sword uh, Sword and Shield. Really, you thought that was um, a, okay? That's that's interesting because I didn't like that one hundred percent. But so, like, I, better the Street Fighter, but eh, you know. Well, so I figured, okay, so I'm paying full price for the Pokemon game. It is very common that Pokemon comes out with. Um, I realize this isn't what it's te- technically called, but it's what I call it. it's the Delta episode. Yeah. Um, when, you know, they always they usually come out with the third game. They've done it ever since Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. Um, they haven't done it. They did it differently with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because they mm-hmm. had two instead of one. Yeah. Um, and then with Sun and Moon, or not with Sun and Moon, with Sword and Shield, now instead we're paying basically full price again. But it's because we're basically getting a second game, which is so, why I is I liked like it. Actual, is it actually like a full like second game, or is it just like a I little wouldn't call bit it extra? a. F- I wouldn't call it a full. I don't think it's like, cause I think I put maybe how uh, I took my time with sword. Yeah. I think it took me about 20 hours to beat. And that's only because I was spending a lot of time doing other stuff. I still um, the game is it. not hard. No, you could probably not. beat it in a couple of days. It's, it's um, the game hand. And as a, my, I could get into that in another episode. I have a, as the mm-hmm. culmination of hand holding uh, mm-hmm. that the series has been moving towards, <laughs> yeah. but um, you could probably beat that game in eight hours. Easy um if you put in some grinding Mm -hmm. but um the uh yeah i just thought it was i mean i I figured i was gonna be paying money for a delta episode anyway yeah and the fact that it's it's got its own storyline it's a whole new region they're loading it up with pokemon that admittedly should have been in the base game regardless yeah um i i don't hold pokemon i don't hold the company against the whole uh pokedex gate uh, mm-hmm. issue that some people do um but it definitely bothered me that the full decks wasn't there so the fact that they are slowly introducing more and more um was nice having to pay it twice for yeah. what was it uh, isle of armor yeah. and the crown Tun- T- tundra so they were that separate was a right little, like, yeah they were uh, you i think you could pay i think you could pay for one or the a season other, pass and get yeah. both oh really because i think there's a I think I could be wrong. I could be massively misremembering this. I think there's a thirty dollar season pass that gets you both. So it's um, funny because I think they both were thirty dollars unless you bought it at a bundle. I think. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. But either either way, it makes sense. Either way, you're you're paying the thirty bucks, which you were going to pay anyway for another game. Yeah. Um. Pro- pro- probably more if they were going to char- charge more for it. Definitely. But uh, it's it still felt especially when you combine the two with the season pass you're basically getting almost a full games worth of content again mm-hmm. with a lot more pokemon with their own storylines um cool new mechanics cool new po- pokemon i thought that was a pretty good way of handling it especially since knowing nintendo yeah. they could have been some real shitters with it yeah oh so, my god yes, so <laughs> like they so really i could have I liked it. I mean, what what do you got? What's what's a good like, example for you? DLC for me is a complex as a as a very broke person that don't usually <laughs> buy DLC. I rarely buy DLC. The only reason why I would buy DLC unless I am truly invested into the game or something catches my attention. Perfect example mm-hmm. is Breath of the Wild. I okay. don't give a single fuck about Zelda games. I don't, I'm be honest. <laughs> but that game was really good and I loved the hell out of it. I loved it to the point where I beat the game, had fun, and then the DLC came out with the like the Master Sword Trials, and I think there was another DLC as well too. I paid for both mm-hmm. of them just because I was so invested into the game, and then mm-hmm. the uh, Master Sword Trial just added a whole different level of difficulty to me as well too, which made it more challenging. Something that I would spend, okay. I would say what, a few hours on, now turned into days because of these trials. Like it. It didn't feel like a brand new game, but at the same time, it did. It's like they they put cocaine into the game and made it more challenging <laughs> and intense, which is really fucking dope to me because 
like I said, I don't buy DLC whatsoever. So the way they executed that, and it wasn't that expensive. I was, I believe it was like 20 bucks for both. Okay. 20 that's bucks not for bad. both. That that's not bad, not bad at all. That is honestly no. three McDonald meals. And I just have to <laughs> not eat out on the weekend. And, was, and I basically have a new game that was more challenging as well, too. So yeah. I will take that as a DLC, like no problem, you know? Okay. Yeah. I that dig was it. solid. So it, it, it seems like for me, D, what makes a DLC worth it is when it extends the game. Whereas yeah. for you, it sounds more, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the read I'm getting is if it makes you want to play the game, the, the same game, just with a different experience. Yeah, basically. Because that's what I experienced with Borderlands as well, too. From Borderlands 2 and 3, with the mm-hmm. DLCs that they were doing, they gave us a new experience. Same game, so I didn't have to like... Huh do new shit but at the same time it gave me a new feel it gave me a new uh drive it just made it it felt like i was playing a different game even though it was the same game you know what i mean if that yeah, makes sense okay. so in that no, i get you save so much time because that means i don't have to really relearn new shit or understand mm-hmm. new stuff like look i'm sure the pokemon game was great with the dlc <laughs> but i'm not in the mood to learn more pokemon okay no <laughs> hell no i'm not in the mood to explore the island and try and do battles over and over. no 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 now nah, I'm good. But Borderlands, though, me just shooting shit, but like with a pumpkin, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, that was, the Halloween DLC that they did was pretty dope as well, too. Even the Tina's Wonderland thing that they were. Nah, I think oh. Tina Wonderland is an action game. But I remember they did like the uh, D&D thing with Tina, right? I remember that. Yes, they did. I yep. definitely remember Bunkers that. Bunkers and, and bad, that was, badasses, yeah. That was so fucking good because that felt like a different game. That 100% mm-hmm. felt like a new game, even though it was the same fucking game, you know? And I put yeah. hours into that as well, too. So, yeah, I'll shit on DLC. But there's those rare gems like that that make it really good. And I love it. I hear you, dude. 100%. Mm. All righty, man. Well, that was, a gr- that was a great discussion. Thank you very much for coming on today. I really appreciate, ap- appreciate that. Nah, thank you for having um, me on. I love this shit. Hell yeah. Dude, anytime you, you want, let us know. Uh, but thank you, everyone, very much for watching today. Matt, where can they find you and what you do? Uh, I am Matthew. I am one half owner of Nerdy Bit. You see that logo on the back? Yeah, you, you can't see it. But I have yeah. a logo on the back that has my logo and everything. If you Google us, look it up. We do streetwear. We stu- do clothing. We do 8-bit perlers as well as accessories and everything. And we're just we're just trying to survive and do the con scene once cons start coming back and all that shit. Hell like, yeah. You know, so. But, yeah, we're doing our best, you know, making keychains, doing yeah. different stuff, you know. His stuff's awesome, guys, too. We'll put a link to it because his stuff is awesome link all that stuff buy my shit i'm broke yeah. if you don't buy my shit just tell people <laughs> about buying my shit either or it's fine don't look <laughs> d- don't worry okay it's all good to me all right it's fine <laughs> awesome all right and everybody don't forget you can watch uh all kinds of gamer culture content right here on you youtube over or uh or over on the grand geek gathering website mm-hmm. uh or a gamerculture.com uh, you can find Gamer Culture on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That is Gamer Culture, one word, cu- culture with a K. And don't forget to check out all the other Grand Geek Gathering content as well. We have a huge b- backlog of all <laughs> kinds of videos, cons, so comics, uh, discussions. To check out Extreme Ranking Challenge, it is amazing. I'm part uh, of that. Any too. comics is it's going through a re- reband. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm why not? Dip your toe into everything. Literally everything. I'm, y'all will find me everywhere. I don't know why. Don't understand <laughs> how. Don't know why people even like me on their, their shows and shit. But hey, you got me. Because we love you, dude. You're I, funny as hell. Don't know you. why. But hey, whatever. I'm just going to go with it. But please, like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. Okay? Please. Hell yeah. What he said. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. You have a good rest of your day. Stay cultured and GGG. GGG, y'all.